So I came up with a concept for building a keyed adapter that allows you to take any kind of a keyed coupler like Lovejoy connector and attach it to a threaded shaft in such a way that you can lock and unlock it. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made it. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. About a month or so ago, I added power feed to the Z-axis on my mill. And in the process of doing that, I needed a way to couple the motor that I was using to the threaded end of the lead screw. In that video, I go over this connector. For those of you that haven't seen that video, I'm going to put a little snippet of that in this video. But if you have seen that video and you want to skip directly to the how I made it section, go to the time index that I'm going to put right there. The Z-axis lead screw is actuated by two conical gears so that you can have a crank on the side that turns the lead screw. The conical gear directly attached to the lead screw is held in place by a 12 millimeter locking nut. Now the easy way to do this would have been to remove the nut, thread a collar at 12 millimeter, and then either use a Nordlock type locking washer or some Loctite that can be broken away without heat. I didn't really want to do that. I wanted something that I could lock or unlock as I saw fit without damaging the threads. It wouldn't take much to tap a collar at 12 millimeters and then put a set screw in it. But that set screw is going to bind into the threads and damage them. What I came up with as a solution is this little guy right here. This is threaded at 12 millimeter. I can thread this bolt in. We're gonna use that in place of the lead screw on the mill. And then this key has been cut with the threads. We can take and fit that into place. And we now have a keyed insert that fits into this connector. With it loose in there, it can slide in and out and we can loosen or tighten the bolt. We fit it into place and now I crank down the set screw. I can't get that to budge at all. Basically that threaded key is acting much like a gib on the teeth of this threaded bolt and holding it in place. If I loosen it up, we can unscrew it. And there is no damage to the teeth on that bolt. I'm really kind of excited about this. This is a really slick way to make a locking fastener that will connect to the threaded end of that lead screw and still be easily removable. So the first step in making this was simply to true up a piece of stock. And this horribly rusted piece of steel that I have chucked up in the lathe is actually a Ford strut rod. I have found that the material Ford used to make strut rods in the 60s and 70s is excellent for machining. I've made a lot of things out of those parts and I like reusing stuff and upcycling things. So any opportunity I get to get a part off a vehicle or other source that I can machine, I'm going to take it. Making the actual adapter was the easy part. All I had to do was true up the outside of the piece of steel, face the end, and then center drill it to the correct size to be tapped for M12 because M12 was the threads on the end of the lead screw. Once I had it tapped, I took it over to the mill and I used a 3 16 inch end mill to cut the groove for the keyway. This is all very basic stuff, easy to figure out, and is not the reason that I made this video. The question that keeps coming up is how do you thread the key. And honestly, it's way easier than you probably think it is. So the key to threading this key is using key stock that is a tight fit in whatever you're using to hold it while you thread it. If you use slightly undersized key stock, it'll flop around and it will make the threading process a whole bunch harder. First thing we're going to do 
is we are going to set the depth. We're going to do this to help hold everything in place and make sure that everything is lined up properly. So we'll tighten down the shaft. Then we're going to go ahead and insert this key stock. And like I said, it is a nice tight fit. He is fixed and tightly in the slot, and now it's just as simple as very gently running a tap down the hole. All right, we have totally bottomed out. So now we're gonna go ahead and take the tap back out. This isn't gonna add threads to the entire key because there's a section of the adapter that is not threaded. So that's really a simple fix. All we have to do is reset this key part way out. So that's what I'm talking about. The threads bottomed out in this piece and we weren't able to get it all the way to the end. But we can still thread it all the way to the end. All we have to do is use this bolt to line it up and get it on the teeth. From there, simply insert it into the coupler. Now, once we get it started, the teeth are going to hold the position of the key. So you can very gently tap it all in, because again, it's a tight fit for the key. Then we can go ahead and unscrew it and get those threads in just a little deeper. Slide the key a little further out. Double check with your bolt before you get the tap in there. And yep, everything's properly lined up. And then we'll go again. This time should be enough to fully get at least the threads started on the key all the way to the end. There we can pull the key out. See, we have threads the whole distance. Now, because the tap is tapered at one end, you actually want to flip it around and go from the other end. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Fully threaded, the full length, and while that's good enough, it's probably not good enough for me. Once you have the initial round of teeth cut, you can actually use the set screw to help you cut them deeper. So it's just like you'd think. You go ahead and install the tap. I actually prefer to go the full depth before I tighten my set screw. So what you do is with the tap installed, you need to tighten the set screw. But what's super important here is that the threaded part of the tap is underneath the set screw. If you happen to have it on one of the gaps, you'll over tighten it and you won't be able to get it threaded properly. So we'll go ahead and tighten it down. And now we were catching again, which shows that it is a little tighter. You add a little more, you go back in. And just like that, we have the key nicely threaded. Now these are not super deep threads, but it is enough to help grab hold. Put it on our bolt. Insert it into our connector. The bolt spins freely. Crank it down. There is no moving that bolt. It is totally locked into place. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.